Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech Qualities. Today we're reviewing a motherboard replacement on a Dell Inspiron 16 Plus. Please like, subscribe to this video. We're adding new videos frequently. All right, let's uh, get started removing all the screws on the bottom cover. Looks like the screw that I had on the right there was um, Remember on most Dells, you want to use a plastic spider tool or a pry tool. Be careful on some Dells that you disassemble, the edges of the bottom cover can be very sharp and can cut you if you're not careful. You get started by removing all the screws on your battery. Disconnect the battery from the motherboard, remove the battery. Remove your memory dims from the motherboard. Disconnect your keyboard and keyboard backlight cables. Disconnect your touchpad ribbon cable. Disconnect the speaker cable. Now we're gonna remove the Wi-Fi card. Always try to leave at least one antenna connected. In this case, we got one antenna going to the right side of the chassis and the other one goes to the left side. So you have to disconnect one. If you can keep the other one intact, that'll save you some time later reconnecting. Remove the screws and remove your SSD hard drive. Disconnect the fan from the motherboard. There's two fans in this particular model. Remove the screws holding in your fans. And remove both fans. Loosen all the screws for your heatsink. Once you get them all loosened, you can kind of grab it and torque it to the left and right and it'll break free. Once you get your heatsink up, you can use a, a chem pad wipe, alcoholic wipe to clean the thermal grease off of the heatsink. Disconnect your video EDP cable from the motherboard. Disconnect your power button ribbon cable from the motherboard. Now you're gonna to start to remove all of the anchor screws that hold the motherboard to the palm rest. Remember to keep your screws organized on the table space around you. It's always good to take a visual note of where these go. Sometimes your screws are different sizes. Make sure you organize them in a way that you remember where to replace them when you're reassembling the new motherboard. And once you get all your anchor screws out, you can see we're prying up and carefully trying to break free and remove the motherboard. As you can see on this particular model, we have a DC jack power connector on the bottom. So I anchored the motherboard up over the top and I carefully disconnect that DC jack cable. Once that's out, the old motherboard comes out. We can start uh, going in reverse order and 
installing the new motherboard. We'll start off by placing the same position to reconnect your DC jack. and carefully reposition the motherboard. Make sure you remove any ribbon cables out of the way so that you're not pinching anything underneath. Most motherboards you're gonna feel fall into place when you get it properly aligned. Once you get it into place and your screw holes are aligned with the palm rest, you can start replacing all of your anchor screws. start putting our ribbon cables back in place starting with the power ribbon cable Reconnect your video EDP cable. Be patient with these as well, sometimes they're tricky. Your little bracket that folds down, you can use your pry tool to take hold of the edge of that bracket and pull. I'm pulling towards me in this video. That's how this particular EDP connector plugs in. Reapply the tape that covers that. Now we're gonna reconnect our keyboard cable. keyboard backlight cable. In this particular model you're going to have to do some cable management. There's a lot of wires kind of strung all over the place. I do the best to manage them towards the top of the touch pad there. We will have to reinsert our battery. We don't want to pinch any cables underneath the battery. Once I get my Wi-Fi card in I'm carefully reconnecting those Wi-Fi antenna cables. Be gentle with those. Here I'm using my tweezer pliers to try to position them and then I use my pry tool to kind of push down when I get them aligned. A lot of technicians will uh, get impatient during this process and they'll push down or mash it and try to get it to engage or click and that could damage the uh, copper connectors. So uh, just be patient with that process. You'll feel it click and engage when it's ready. Get my speaker cable plugged back in. and my touchpad ruin cable. Reinsert my memory dims. I'm gonna reinsert my M.2 SSD drive. Sometimes those top covers get in the way. I think I end up removing this one and just uh, try to put the drive in first. Then I go back and apply the top cover. I'm gonna apply my uh, thermal grease here. Try not to put too much on. You don't need a whole lot on here, but try to, whatever you do add, add it evenly across the surface of the GPU and the CPU. And the heat sink, when you apply it, will do the rest. It'll evenly spread that out. Some people like to spread it out before they apply, and that's fine too. The key is, is making sure you, you don't forget your thermal grease because you could have overheating problems. You're gonna retighten these heat sink screws in the order that they're numbered. Most heat sinks are numbered one through however many screws they are. That will help evenly distribute your thermal grease. 
and reinstall your CPU and GPU fans. Apply the screws. Don't forget to reconnect those cables. Oftentimes those are forgotten and uh, Dell will throw an error at startup or during post. If you don't have those connected, they won't detect any fan. And now we bring the battery in for the final step. Again, make sure your wires are properly managed uh, along the top edge there. Sometimes if your wires get in the way, that battery won't seat all the way. We really appreciate everyone joining us today. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe. We are adding new videos frequently on various makes and models. And I would love to have you. Please comment. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me at techqualities at gmail.com.